Hello, my name is Tom Carhill. It's the 17th of October 2013. I'm going to make a quick video here about a subject which I quite, find quite funny. It's kind of like the exception that proves the rule. And the question I'll be asking is, can Satanism ever be funny right now? Um, when I say Satanism, I'm not one of these people who's um, talking about what do you call it, atheistic Satanism, where well, there's, a, there's the, theological Satanists and there's atheistic Satanists. Um, the theological ones are the ones who believe that there's actually a devil and they're trying to worship the devil and all that stuff. And then there's the other ones who believe in um, the fact that you should just do whatever you want. And um, they don't even necessarily believe in bad stuff, but they just don't really buy all this stuff about God and stuff like that. And they just think you should just do whatever you want to please yourself. Again, um, I think that's kind of like a naive cover to um, actual Satanism, but I still think a lot of people do actually believe in that, and they're not necessarily bad, but they're a kind of cover, just like with Freemasons, you get all the donuts who don't actually realise it's devil worship, like people who join a Rotary club that don't realise it's devil worshipping, and obviously, um, like the um, new, uh, Seven Day Adventists, again, they don't realise it's masonry, they don't realise it's devil worshipping, uh, you've got the, um, what do you call it, the other ones, the Jehovah's Witnesses, again, they don't realise it's devil worshipping, do they? It is devil worshipping. So, um, and of course, you've got the Mormons again, devil worshipping, Judaism, devil worshipping. Obviously, it is. If you look at it, whatever way you look at it, it's devil worshipping. And when you get down to it, Christianity, the Old Testament, devil worshipping. You say I only follow the New Testament. Well, Jesus endorsed the Old Testament, so it's devil worshipping. Of course, it is human sacrifice. All that, all advocated in the Bible. So. Basically, I've probably annoyed all the different religious people there, but the facts are the facts. Your own holy book makes it very clear what it is. Right, so, want to get over that little point there. That's the question. Can devil worshipping ever be funny? Right now, I'm mean, going to get even worse than that. Right? Some people try and raise spirits from the dead. Actually, quite a lot more people do it than what you believe. Now, a lot of people in England have done Ouija boards. Now I've never done one and I never would do one uh, and I never would want to do one because every single person who does them, whether they be a complete divvy or really intelligent, they always get extremely scared afterwards and st st bad stuff starts happening and um, obviously something very wrong is happening when you do Ouija boards. I don't really know what's happening but something very bad is happening. So that happens and I, th I think that is actually doing something which is getting very close to the mark if it's not doing something similar to what I'm going to explain right now. I know somebody, and he knows this guy, and um, he, he, he this guy's all right, but he's a bit of a fuck up. And um, basically, what he does is um, he get he, he's really into Alistair Crowley and stuff like this. This person he knows now he doesn't approve of this guy's activities, but he still has stuff to do with him once in a while until it's you know just to see what he's up to. He's always up to something interesting. It might be depressing and horrible, but he is interesting. So anyway, one day he's around this guy's house, and <laughs> he, he he left late at night. And he went home and he said to him, um, and he, sorry, he was trying to get to sleep. He was very tired. He was trying to get to sleep and he couldn't get to sleep. And he saw this, what he describes as like a smoke ball appearing in the room, in sort of up in the corner of the room. And it had this guy's face on it, but it looked like a demonic version of his face. And it was like it was trying to materialize in the room. Now, this guy knew quite a lot about all these. He knew most lots about a plethora of different subjects. He's very educated along a wide range of things. And he's heard that that's how like demons try to materialize if people are, you know, de that's how devils, malevolent spirits, if you like, try and materialize. And he said, he thought, I'm just going to ignore him and I'm going to try and go to sleep because it's obviously, he's, you know, he's trying to get to sleep. All of a sudden this thing appears and it was just sort of like, it was like it was trying to materialize. Now, I'll just cut that story dead there and I'll pick it up again. About three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, I went to France with uh, my relatives and we were in this house. And one of my cousins became, we've been there about, I think it was there 10 days, something like that. One of my cousins became um, agitated one evening and at night time she went to bed and then she didn't want to sleep in her room. She went to sleep in my cousin, my uh, brother's room, right? And I remember thinking that's a bit weird because she didn't really give an explanation, but she said something about, it. She, you know, I could hear her moving around. She went to bed and she got up and went to bed in his room. Now in this house, they had a lot of like Hieronymus Boss, Hieronymus Bosch-esque pictures round. This house had like very high ceilings in some of the rooms. It would be like three stories high. Um, it's a bit like, like a lot of these houses in France. France, they look like big castles. You know, they're actually, you know, if you bought the same house in England, it probably cost you 10 million pounds. But in France, it's just like 
quite normal. They like lots, you know, probably wouldn't even cost more than two hundred grand. But anyway, we're in this we're in this house, and um, there was something, you know, something a bit creepy about it. And I'd say people who have big, massive Hieronymus Bosch pictures everywhere, or ones that they've done themselves, or something, they they because I think they also sold them because I think I remember seeing a card or something because it was like a house that they were renting out. I think you could get them commissioned these paintings or get them painted. I think they might have painted them themselves. But I'd say when I look back at it. There's absolutely no question they would have been devil worshippers or they were like a little bit too interested in that type of stuff. But at the time, I, I didn't really know so much about these things. But anyway, I definitely left the house with the conclusion, and I'll explain in a while, that you know, there was something a bit, there was definitely something odd going on in the house. Anyway, the same night that his cousin went in to go and sleep in the other one's room, uh, I was in my bed, and I've had it before, I've had sleep paralysis. Now, if you've never had sleep paralysis, that's like when you're sleeping and all of a sudden you wake up but you can't move, you can't open your eyes, you, 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 you're you aware of what's going on in the room around you, but it's like that thing where you wake up and you think, have I got my eyes open, but you're sort of dreaming that you've got your eyes open, but you haven't, you can't open your eyes, but of course when you can't open your eyes, your body starts imagining that you can see the room, and of course you're always aware of where you are in the room and what way your head's facing and stuff like that. But anyway, I started noticing... I, I, I got this feeling, this wasn't, I don't get it often, but I've had sleep paralysis in the past. And I was getting the feeling that in this room, there was these, um, there was sort of like an evil spirit trying to materialise, like a smoke ball. Now, I hadn't heard this story of my friends yet, and I'd never read anything about this. And I thought it was like a, a and I, I didn't recognise the face on it. But I got the very, very definite feeling that this this thing was fucking around with me and um, trying to do my head in. And I wasn't scared, but I thought, you're, you're, you, yeah, I've been lying here for about an hour and I can't go to sleep, you'll do my head in now. And I just thought, I'll just ignore it. And I thought, yeah, there's definitely something going on. I found it kind of quite interesting because I was aware enough to know what was going on to that point. But anyway, so this smoke ball with this face trying to appear, it kept sort of like appearing. But of course, I didn't have my eyes open, but this is the point. If you've got 10 people in a room and they're all imagining some, the same thing in their mind, is that any more real than, or any less real than if something actually appears and they all see it? Because this is the point, you, your brain's only seeing signals of things, that are, you know, so I definitely didn't have my eyes open, but I could definitely feel it there. So it was in my mind, but then things you see are also in your mind, aren't they? And also, of course, you could imagine you're seeing something you're not seeing. So the point is, there was definitely this thing was there that hadn't been put there by me. So anyway, these things do happen. And then when I heard this story, my friend was telling me about it. It made me realise these things obviously do, do exist. They do exist. Whatever they are, I don't know, but they do exist. Now, this is where, this, you because a lot of you will think there's, no, there's nothing funny about devil worshipping and raising the dead or raising evil spirits. There's nothing funny about it. But I think, I think I, unfortunately, the exception proves the rule. I think there is, right? And this is, this, is, this, is, this is the exception. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it can be funny. Like lots of nasty things, it can be funny. Right? Basically, so he was round this guy's house. He went home. And he um, sort of started feeling that there was a demonic presence, <laughs> demonic presence in his um, demonic presence in his room, stopping him from going to sleep. And so the next time he went round to his mate's house, he, he remembers thinking, "Yeah, he, he thought about it a bit in between that guy's. He's diddling around with spirits. I bet you he's doing something with spirits. But there's something funny going on there." And he went round there, and he goes, "How you doing, mate?" He goes. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm all right, but I'm a bit depressed because um, this Polish guy is renting a room off me, and he, and he hasn't paid his rent for like two or three weeks, and he just keeps saying he's going to pay, and I can't really get rid of him because you know I can't be bothered getting anyone else. It's too much effort, and I trusted him, and he hasn't paid, so I'm sort of down some money. I need the money, and he goes, Oh right, yeah, well that's what happens when you rent rooms out, and then this guy, as though it was like a sort of uncontrollable little outburst, he goes, oh, I'm sending another demon, and he goes, What did you say? And he said, Oh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> now I think that's one of the most funny stories ever. So this po this po <laughs> this Polish guy hasn't paid his rent for a couple of weeks. So this guy's like sending malevolent spirits around the room at him. <laughs> now this guy never told him. Look, you, you you sent a spirit round to my house, didn't you? He never let. He just left it because he knew obviously this guy's been doing this. But this poor Polish guy who hasn't paid his rent for a couple of weeks. Now the where this guy lives, he lives in um, um one of the most poorest places. Uh, it's in London, so it's very, very cheap rent. So it's not a lot of rent. It's not like he was living in Mayfair or something. It could could cripple you financially. It's not a lot of money. So the point is that this guy's <laughs> sending demons around because you're not paying your rent. So the moral, I don't know what the moral of that story is. Maybe it's, you know, you should pay your rent if you rent off a devil worshipper or someone who raises the dead.
but um, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. But as I said, these things, I think there's, there's a little bit more to them. They're not just a fancy. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>